Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs, and this is Ron's Rundown. We're going to go over the MLB games scheduled for Monday, May 23rd, 2022. Now, if you like what you see, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to leave your baseball picks in the comments section below. Now, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at the Premium Picks tab at PickDogs.com. I'm running a daily $15 MLB best bet, and we've hit our last eight best bets as well, so you can check that out at Pick Dogs Premium. Alrighty, here we go. Here are the games for Monday, May 23rd. First up, we take a look at the contest between the Colorado Rockies and the Pittsburgh Pirates. We're going to see Chad Cole and JT Brubaker on the mound here. Cole 3-2 with a 3.86 ERA. Brubaker 0-4 with a 5.5 ERA. Now, I do think Brubaker's numbers are a little bit deceiving on paper. He's got great strikeout stuff this season with 10.75 Ks per nine. He's actually limiting more home runs than he did last year. 2.03 homers per nine he gave up in 2021 with Pittsburgh, but only 1.25 this year. So that XFIP is right around 4.03, which is pretty solid, and is expected ERA 3.61. So we can expect to see Brubaker pitch well in the next few starts, and he's facing a Rockies lineup that has struggled on the road against right-handed pitching this year. You know, overall, they've had a pretty good team OPS against righties, but on the road, the Rockies are ranked 29th in team OPS with a 530 team OPS. This is also going to be the first game for the Rockies on their road trip after playing at Coors Field on Sunday. I don't usually like to take the Rockies in that kind of spot because it does take some time to adjust to the altitude change. And the Rockies' offense was struggling even at Coors Field against the Mets. They faced Taiwan Walker, a pretty feasible spot there for the Rockies' bats. They couldn't get any offense at all. They got shut out in that game. They also only scored two runs in game one of that doubleheader. So the offense even struggled at a hitter-friendly park at Coors Field. Now on the road here, I think it's a tough spot for Colorado. And I think the Pirates are favorites for a reason. I'm going to take the Pittsburgh Pirates here on the money line behind Brubaker. Next up, we see the Baltimore Orioles taking on the New York Yankees. We're going to see Jordan Lyles and Garrett Cole on the mound here. Lyles 2-4 with a 4.11 ERA. Cole 4-0 with a 2.89 ERA. Now, Garrett Cole is in great form. He's coming off a sharp start against these Orioles where he went seven innings of two-run ball, five strikeouts, and a 3-2 Yankees win. Now, I do think this game is going to be pretty high scoring. I think the Yankees will probably do most of that scoring against Lyles. They've seen a lot of Lyles this year. And I do think this is a spot where they're going to be able to get to him, especially at Yankee Stadium. You know, last start, Lyles didn't fare too poorly against the Yankees. He gave up only two earned runs, three total runs. But in his previous starts, like the one on April 26, Lyles did get hit very hard. And that was in the Bronx at Yankee Stadium. Four and two-thirds, seven hits, six earned runs, three home runs. So I do think the Yankees are going to score plenty here. And I also think Garrett Cole, we've seen him give up a home run or two. Uh, this season, the hard uh, hard hit percentage and average exit velocity aren't the best for him this year. And that's why he's given up at least one home run in two of his last three starts. So I could see the Orioles pitching in two or three runs here. I think the Yankees score five or more. So I'm going to take the over in the Yankees-Orioles because the Yankees price right now, minus 300 plus, just not a, it's no, no value there for me. Give me the over in the Orioles-Yankees. Next up, we see the Cincinnati Reds hosting the Chicago Cubs. Now we're going to see Drew Smiley and Vladimir Gutierrez on the mound for this contest. Two pitchers that I really don't love in this spot. You know, Vladimir Gutierrez 0-5 this year. Drew Smiley 1-5. Uh, so a combined 1-10 record between the two pitchers. Gutierrez has had issues with the walks and home runs. His strikeout numbers are also down this season. You know, 8.65 ERA and a 7.52 FIP. Not very good numbers. Drew Smiley, on the other hand, you know, not a strikeout guy, more of a pitch-to-contact guy, but he's limited a hard contact overall this year. A 1.85 walks per nine looks pretty good also. And, you know, 3.97 ERA, 3.73 XFIP, not bad either. Uh, this is a tough game. You know, the Cubs have really found ways, new ways to lose ball games, but they have played well on the road this season. This is a game I'm not going to be touching, but I'm going to have to take a lean on the Cubs, who just have the better starter and a little bit better lineup as well. Give me Chicago on the money line. In our next game, we see the Washington Nationals hosting the Los Angeles Dodgers. Tyler Anderson and Yoan Adone are your starters. Now, I do think this is a big-time pitching mismatch in this one. You know, Tyler Anderson, a 4.04 ERA, but an even better 3.42 expected ERA. His strikeout numbers are up this year to 8.58 Ks per nine. The walks are down from last year, 1.26 walks per nine, really solid from Anderson. The home runs have been a problem at times, but we're not really concerned about it in this one. 
as he's facing a Nationals lab that's ranked 25th in baseball in Team OPS against lefties and dead last 30th in baseball in isolated power against lefties. So I think Anderson has a strong outing, and the Dodgers are facing Yoan Adon, who has really struggled in 2022, one of the top pitching prospects for the Nationals. 6.38 ERA and even worse, 6.44 expected ERA. He's allowing way too many walks, 5.65 walks per nine. And that's dangerous against the Dodgers team that can get on base against righties. They're number one in baseball and team OPS against right-handed pitching this season and number four in baseball in isolated power. I think the Dodgers lineup gets to a dome. I think Anderson has a strong outing. I'm going to take the Dodgers here on the run line. In our next game, we see the Philadelphia Phillies taking on the Atlanta Braves. Zach Wheeler and Tucker Davidson are your projected starters. Now, we have two teams that have been two of the most underperforming teams this year. Both have a 19-22 and record this season. And uh, three games under 500 for two teams that are some of the most talented teams in baseball. Big-name players, Ronald Acuna Jr., Matt Olson, Bryce Harper, Nick Castellanos. The list goes on, including Philly starter in this one, Zach Wheeler who uh, was at one point, you know, an NL Cy Young candidate last season. This year, got off to a rough start, but I think he's pitching a lot better lately. 3.49 ERA on the season, but a 2.65 FIP. Uh, he's striking out batters a little bit less than last year, but still 9.54 Ks per nine, not bad at all. He's limiting a lot more home runs this year. 0.47 homers per nine is really good to see. But the walks really haven't been too much of an issue either. And the Braves lineup has been inconsistent. You know, we saw him struggle on Sunday against the Marlins. And even the, the two wins on Friday and Saturday in that series, they didn't blow out the Marlins offensively. And I think against the Wheeler, they're going to struggle with the sticks. And I don't really trust Tucker Davidson in this spot. You know, the left-hander's not going to go too deep into this ball game, but right now has as many strikeouts as walks. I know it's really early in his season. He's only pitched seven and two-thirds innings, but you know, we saw him struggle last year at times in the majors. He had a 3.6 ERA in the regular season, but a 6.03 expected ERA because the walks and home runs do sneak up on him. The Phillies have hit lefties well this year, and I think they should be the favorites in this game. So I'm going to take the Phillies on the money line in this spot. In our next game, we see an AL Central battle between the Detroit Tigers and the Minnesota Twins. Elvin Rodriguez and Chris Archer are your starters. Now, Chris Archer, not a guy that I back too often. 26 in the third innings this season he's pitched and only had a 4.1 ERA, not too bad, but the home runs and walks really scare me. 4.78 walks per nine allowed, 2.05 home runs per nine allowed. That gives him a 5.83 FIP this year, but I still think he is the better option in this matchup when compared to Elvin Rodriguez, who struggled quite a bit in his season debut with the Tigers. Two and two thirds innings, three hits, four earned runs, a home run, and two walks allowed. That was a 10 to one Tigers loss against the White Sox. And Tigers have struggled on the road this year, five and 13 away from home, while the Twins five games above 500 at home this season. I think the Twins lineup and bullpen are way better than Detroit's, especially the lineup when you look at guys like Luisa Rice, who are red hot offensively, getting on base left and right. It's really tough for Detroit to compete in this one. I just don't think they have the offense to compete here. I'm going to take the Twins on the run line, but not my favorite game on the board. Next up, we see the Toronto Blue Jays taking on the St. Louis Cardinals. Jose Barrios and Miles Mikolas on the mound for this contest. Now, the Blue Jays have been an underperformer this year. They still are three games above 500 on the season, but they were a team a lot of people picked to win the American League East, and they're three games under 500 on the road this season. And Barrios has not pitched well for Toronto. A 4.83 ERA, but an even worse 6.85 expected ERA. 6.15 Ks per nine. His strikeout numbers are way down. He had 9.56 in 2021, down to 6.15 in 2022. That is something to worry about if you're Barrios. And another thing to worry about is you're facing a Cardinals lineup that I think is the hottest in baseball right now. We saw him score 18 runs on Sunday. Guys like Paul Goldschmidt, who I think him and Manny Machado are the two hottest hitters in baseball right now. I mean, the Cardinals lineup is looking strong against lefties and righties. Beginning of the season, they did struggle a little bit with right-handed pitching, but they are doing just fine now, and I think they're going to do just fine against Barrios. Miles Mikolas, you know, I wasn't the biggest fan of his going into the season, but i got to give him credit. He's pitched well. 1.680 RA, 2.83 FIP, so he does have some room for regression. Biggest reason for that is his strikeout numbers are down, but he's been more of a pitch-to-contact guy from the beginning of his career. He's limiting walks, he's limiting home runs and hard contact, and he's facing a Blue Jays lineup that really has underperformed. We saw him against the Reds on Sunday only scored two runs in that ball game against a really weak Reds bullpen pitching staff, starting rotation, you name it. Uh, I got to take the Cardinals in this spot. You're getting a really good price with St. Louis. They are just a much better team right now. 
Next up, we see the Cleveland Guardians taking on the Houston Astros. Zach Plezak and Luis Garcia are your starters. And I really can't trust Zach Plezak in this spot, facing a really tough Astros lineup. Astros number two in baseball and Team OPS against right-handed pitching this season. You know, Plezak's given up at least one home run in his last four starts. And I do think he'll give up another one in this spot against a very powerful Astros lineup that's number one in baseball in isolated power against righties. But I do think the Cleveland Guardians at least chip in offensively here as well. They're sixth in baseball in Team OPS against right-handed pitching, eighth in isolated power against righties. Luis Garcia has pitched well overall this season, but I think he is susceptible to give up two or three in this spot. And I think this game's going to go over the total. So give me the over in the Guardians-Astros. Next up, we see the Kansas City Royals taking on the Arizona Diamondbacks. It's the battle of the Zachs as Zach Granke takes on Zach Davies. Two guys that I haven't really been too confident in this year, but I do think Zach Davies is the better option in for the Diamondbacks. You know, Zach Davies, 6.86 Ks per nine. You know, I'd like to see that number rise a little bit, but a 4.35 ERA and a 3.82 expected ERA. Solid numbers for him. And Zach Granke, you guys have watched it all season. I've faded Granke basically from the start of the season. And, you know, he's only got 3.68 Ks per nine. I've mentioned that in his later years in his career, the strikeout numbers are way, way down. You may be saying, you know, Ron, well, if he's getting out, you know, ZRA is low and he's not giving up hard contact, you know, who cares about the strikeouts as long as he's getting, not allowing hard contact. But the fact is he is allowing hard contact. He's in the bottom 21st percentile in hard hit percentage. He's below average in average ex exit velocity. He's in the bottom 17th percentile in expected slugging percentage. It's only a matter of time before Zach Cranky gets hit. He's got a 5.2 expected ERA, and he's facing a Diamondbacks lineup that, sure, doesn't light it up on the team OPS numbers against righties, but again, in terms of isolated power against righties, the Diamondbacks are one of the strongest teams in the league. They're ranked fifth in baseball in isolated power against right-handed pitching. It's really been home run or nothing for this Diamondbacks lineup, and they've also raised their numbers team OPS-wise up to 17th in the league. I think their lineup is better. I think Davies is the better starter. I think they're at home here. Got to take them on the money line. Next up, we see the San Diego Padres hosting the Milwaukee Brewers. Now, the San Diego Padres have been pretty good to us here on the rundown, and there's really no reason for me to get off of them on this in this spot. You know, Adrian Hauser, sure, 3.22 ERA, but this expected FIP and expected ERA numbers are a little bit higher at 3.9 and 3.69. Padres lineup is doing a good job. You know, we saw him score 10 runs on Sunday. Manny Machado, one of the hottest hitters in baseball this season, one of the best hitters in baseball overall this year. Hitting almost 375. He went four for four on Sunday with four extra base hits, three doubles, and a triple in that one. You know, this lineup is, is playing well, and I think you saw the Brewers get blown out on Sunday. I think this is a tough spot for him on the road going on the West Coast trip here. I think the Padres showed this weekend they were the underdogs in all three games of that series against the Giants, and they won all three of them outright. I got to take him in this spot again. Give me the Padres on the money line. In our next game, we see the Oakland A's taking on the Seattle Mariners. Zach Logue and Marco Gonzalez on the mound for this one. Now, there's not a lot of dogs that I like on Monday's card. I just think the favorites are appropriately favorited. But I think in this spot, it does make sense to take the run and a half with the underdog. Just because I do think both pitchers are similar. And I don't really think the Mariners deserve to be minus 175 favorites right now with the way they're playing. I know they fare a lot better at home than they do on the road this year where they do have a winning record at home. But... I mean, against the Red Sox, they really looked lost out there. They had leads in, in all those, basically all those games. They blew two four nothing leads. One of them was a five nothing lead. The Red Sox bullpen was able to shut them down for the most part, which you never see from the Red Sox this season. And the lineup for Seattle was really inconsistent. You know, at early spots in the games, we saw them uh, put up a fight, but when the when it mattered the most, the offense just kind of went dead and. I just don't think this is a team that you can lay that kind of price with right now. Zach Logue, although I do think there is some regression in his game, he has pitched well this season for the most part. He's only given up four earned runs in his first four outings this year. I'd like to see those strikeout numbers rise, and I'd like to see him limit the long ball going forward. And, you know, just Marco Gonzalez is a guy that, you know, 3.08 ERA, I don't think he's going to be able to hold on to that for too much longer. A 1.5 whip this year. Strikeout numbers are way, way down. We've mentioned that he's had issues with the long ball at times. The Oakland A's have played really well on the road this season. I'm going to take them on the run line here as the dog. In our final game of the night, we see the New York Mets taking on the San Francisco Giants. David Peterson and Alex Cobb are your starters. 
Now, it was a rough weekend for the Giants. They were favored in all three games against the Padres in that NL West rivalry series, and the Giants lost all three of those games. They were swept at home. But I do think it gets better in this one, at least, in this particular game. I do like Alex Cobb a lot. I do think his numbers are really deceiving. 5.61 ERA. I don't think he's pitching anywhere near that kind of way. 11.22 Ks per nine. He's only given up .7 home runs per nine. He's got a 1.75 expected ERA. 2.36 xFIP, you know, only 25 and two-thirds innings pitched this season. He's going to be fine. I think he's going to pitch well in this spot. I know the Mets have hit righties well this season, but I do think the Giants lineup matches up a lot better with Peterson than the Mets do with Cobb. You know, Peterson's a guy that in you know, 1.890 RA looks really good on paper, but there's a reason why the Mets have brought him up from AAA, brought him back down. They've optioned him at times. You know, if he was that 1.89 pitcher, 1.89 ERA pitcher that we've seen, they wouldn't have any thoughts about bringing him down to the minor leagues, but the fact is he does have issues in his game, and the biggest thing that worries me for him is his strikeout numbers are down from last year, so he was already a below-average starter in 2021 with 9.232 Ks per nine. Now you're down to 7.58 Ks per nine. The walks are still a problem at times. I think he's in trouble here against a Giants lineup that has done a lot better against lefties recently than they did in the beginning of the season. Give me the Giants at home here on the money line. And that's it. Those are the games for Monday, May 23rd. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comment section below. Again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. As always, this is Ron Romanelli. Good luck.